why did your school decide to get involved with the teaching for mastery program? Okay, so quality of teaching has always been a priority in the school. Um, we've been on a journey from a category to good, and quality of teaching has to remain the most important thing. Uh, we lead from the bottom up, that's my management style, and my maths leader really drives maths. She's been a part of that programme, and she came to me after doing her maths programme and felt that the NCETM teaching for mastery approach was the way to go and the way to improve teaching and standards in the school. Was this uh, an easy decision for you to make? Yes, because I really trust my team to drive their own self-improvement. We'd, we'd had a research-based uh, ethos to, to the way of improving teaching anyway, and I was then taken to the NCETM launch conference in London, and right from the start, we both agreed this is the way we were going to go forward as a school. In broad terms, what did you have to commit to with the programme and did, uh, did it turn out as expected? So the first commitment was to agree that my maths lead would be released to drive the TRG programme, which is the Teacher Research Group programme. And then from that I released teachers as part of that and then she visited other schools and they visited here. Uh, that's already a part of our uh, weekly school improvement and moderation. We do things alongside our teachers, so it fitted perfectly with that. And what was the second part? What was the second uh, part? Did it turn out as expected? Um, better. Uh, um, much better. It's, it's really roller coastered into something bigger. Uh, it initially improved the quality of teaching of those teachers. It gave us uh, a shared vocabulary in terms of improvement within maths, particularly around the areas of fluency and representation and structure and mathematical thinking and the other areas. It, it really gave us that, that sense of all having the same vocabulary to use in terms of improving. So, and then from that, we started to have impact across the TRG. So other schools then came on board and other senior leadership teams came on board and we almost became inundated and then it came to the end of last year where we were asked to go on part of the Shanghai exchange which I immediately said yes because for, for my maths lead it was the next stage and that part although it ended up being quite a bit of work was was the pinnacle of, of where we'd come in terms of improving maths and I still think we've got another three or four years at least and maybe even longer to keep improving. Are you aware of other schools that were involved in going to Shanghai? Um, we, well Katrina Plus, who's my maths lead, had been working with, with uh, the maths hub and that's really where this came from and she had a good relation with the maths hub. So this was the second, second part of the exchange programme and so she'd spoken to the maths hub about that and we were one of the first to say, look, I'll give the commitment to send her across to Shanghai for two weeks uh, and then for her to come, then to come back here. And yes, it was a lot of work when they came back, but just in terms of how our children rose to the occasion, how our community rose to the occasion, it, and our results. You know, we, we got the best maths results in Hastings last year uh, and our results will be, you know, maybe not as good, but consistently strong now for the next three or four years at least and even longer. How did the experience develop the teachers from your school who participated in the work group? We already had a good ethos of um, teachers taking a research approach to improving their own teaching so that was already there but what it's really done is it's, it's given us a commonality of language and, and a way to what we call polish our lessons. So teachers improve their teaching alongside the senior leadership team and after they've taught there's a series of quite challenging questions which are asked both by the teacher and by the, the, part, the, the teachers who are part of the research group and that's been I think the most powerful aspect to the point where we're using that TRG approach not just in maths, but now across the school, and we're developing a TRG approach for reading as well. My name is Katrina Pluse. I'm the maths leader of learning here at Sandown Primary School, and I'm also trained by the NCETM as a teaching for mastery specialist. 
How is maths teaching in your school changing, or has it changed, as a result of your being in the programme? Are there any key changes you've made so far? So the quality of teaching was something that we identified that we wanted to improve as being part of the Teaching for Mastery programme. So we started this off by having inset days at the beginning of our journey to ensure that all staff were aware of the key principles behind Teaching for Mastery. So we went through the key uh, mastery principles and made sure all staff were understanding what representation and structure meant and coherence and how they could build this into their um, daily lessons. So we brought into a textbook scheme to be able to support us with our journey on teaching for mastery, which allowed teachers to feel far more confident in being able to deliver quality teaching for mastery lessons. But one of the things that we wanted to be really careful of was making sure we used the textbooks critically and we didn't just pick up the textbooks and run with a lesson. So we talked about how we needed to adapt the way we planned our lessons. So previously we would plan lessons for the whole of the week and make our resources ready for that week whereas now we plan very reflectively and on a one day basis so um, we will plan one lesson and the resources that we need for that lesson and at the end of the lesson we will reflect on how well that lesson has gone and what the children need to be able to make good progress in the next lesson so it's very responsive to the children's individual needs rather than plowing through um, because you've planned a whole week's worth of worth of learning so the children are now making far better progress because of the small steps that the lessons are providing for the children. So we changed the way in which our planning format looked and the way in which the structure of the lesson looked. So now the structure of the lesson starts with fluency, where we're doing lots of times table practice, counting practice that will link to their learning in, the day, in that day. And then we move on to um, starting the lesson with a problem. So every lesson starts with a problem and the children will come up with different ways of solving the problem so we get that conceptual variation within the lesson so the children will look at lots of different ways to solve it and we will make a generalization to say which way was the best way to solve the problem and why so the children will explain which method works better which method doesn't work and explain the reasons behind it so the children make that generalization to be able to apply to their independent work so during that problem solving part of the lesson there's lots of backwards and forwards between the children and the teacher the children are doing lots of work together and talking collaboratively working things out on the whiteboard so they're active throughout the whole lesson there aren't any passive children sitting on the carpet listening to the children listening to the teacher they're always working with the teacher going backwards and forwards so they're very active in their learning once they've made that generalisation, they then get a chance to apply it onto questions that we've set for them to independently practice, which they then do in their maths books. So we don't use the workbooks from the textbook scheme that we've brought into. The children still present it into their normal maths books because we feel this allows the children to practice setting out their questions correctly, choosing the most efficient way and being able to reason as well. So writing reasoning sentences to explain why they've chosen it in that way. So that structure of that lesson is really important in moving towards that teaching for mastery journey. So we also made sure within our lessons, one of our Ofsted um, um, areas for improvement was to make sure that we are challenging all of our pupils. So one of the um, ways in which they do that in Shanghai is by using Dong Nao Chin activities, which means the children are using their brain to think in a different way. So we make sure that that's, that element is there within all lessons. And that's for all pupils, not just for your children who are working at greater depth. So we make sure that there are opportunities throughout the lesson to challenge children and think in a different way so that they're deepening their own, their own learning. So that's always a feature within our lesson um, that we use here at Sandam. We've also changed the way in which our children are sat in the classrooms. So previously they would have been sat in ability groups, whereas now they're sat in more mixed ability groups. Some teachers have chosen to sit, them, sit the children in rows, whereas some teachers have rows and groups. It depends on what works best for the teacher. We allow our teachers to use what works best in their classrooms because we know that they're going to make the right decisions for their children. We've also adapted our marking and feedback policy to fit with um, our teaching for mastery journey. So within our marking and feedback policy, it's now stated that marking is very responsive and is done in class with the children. So we mark alongside them and the children mark alongside us as well. So they are very um, good at doing their own self-assessment and peer assessment. So they mark their work, we mark their work with them. 
and we have symbols and things that we can use in their books to show whether they are reasoning within their work. So we just put an R, whether they are fluent, we just use the code of an F and we can mark really quickly because we feel the best way for giving children feedback is right there in the lesson. By doing it after the lesson or the next day, the children don't necessarily remember what that feedback was on. And because we are doing our lessons um, daily, the main feedback for that lesson is to be able to attend the next lesson because that lesson has been planned specifically to follow on from the previous lesson. And we often do at the beginning of a lesson a review. So we'll review what they've done the day before just by asking them a key question and re going over the concepts that they've learned. So that's fed into our marking and feedback policy as well. Um, so we also do, to improve the quality of teaching here at Sandown, I have subject leadership time where I work alongside teachers um, twice a week. So they come and we do joint planning, joint book scrutiny um, and support to see what they need to be able to move forwards in, in their teaching of maths. So we can look at planning a lesson and how that lesson would have changed from what they had previously thought it might look like to how we can embed those teaching for mastery strategies. So again, we use our textbooks and we supplement what we've got from our textbooks with other materials, materials produced by the NCETM or other maths hubs from across um, the country. There, there's lots of materials out there that we can use to supplement what we are already using. So having, that te having the textbooks that we had the match funding for from the maths hubs is really, really helpful, a good resource for our teachers to be able to know how to implement that into a lesson, what resources that they need to be using with the children and how the structure of the lesson should look. But we also use other materials to be able to make sure those lessons are suitable for our children. Hey, my name is Kate Tugwell and I'm the Deputy Head here at Sandown and I also have responsibility for the budget for our disadvantaged pupils. What signs of positive impact have you seen here at the Sandown? Okay, I think the biggest overall positive impact that I've seen is in terms of raising the profile of maths across the school, the enthusiasm for it with children, with my colleagues, right across the school it's definitely, definitely a more positive feeling about math than in any other school I've worked in. Have you enabled staff here to learn and collaborate? Yeah, I think the staff collaboration is key to the success of the whole process. We, we as a reflective school, we run a, a TRG approach, the teacher research group approach. So time is built in, budget implications are considered for allowing staff to be covered, to be out of class so that they can meet and talk about how the um, Maths Mastery approach is, is being delivered in their own year groups. How have you been able to keep parents informed of the changes that you've made so far? And how have they responded as Okay, well? I, I would say the response has been really positive from parents. Obviously, ultimately, we've got our results from last year that we're very proud of that we share with them. But we also like to keep our parents informed in terms of the methods that we're using in class so they can support their children with their home learning. So we run a lot of parental engagement events because we know that really for anything to have impact it's about working with the whole family. So um, we run maths parties, we have workshops where the children teach the parents and I think really generally parents have felt very well supported in how to support their children. And how have the pupils themselves responded? Um, I would say, again, with the pupils, it, it, again, it's a positive response. They, they love coming up to be tested for their times tables badges. Um, the wristbands that we have in place throughout Key Stage 2 give them a, a, a tangible piece of evidence that they're making progress with their times tables, so in regard to the fluency. Um, and I would say in any lesson or in any book that I see when they come up to logbook to celebrate their, their learning, there's clear evidence that they are using all the elements of a, of a mastery approach lesson. What would you say to other heads of schools who might be thinking about getting involved in the Teaching for Mastery programme? I would say sign up now. I know there's a waiting list and it's becoming ever more popular, but from our point of view it's been it's had the most impact in terms of improving quality of teaching and attitudes of teachers in the last three years. It's not just the maths, it's about a shared pedagogy, it's about really creating a resilient staff who polish and improve their lessons from the bottom up. There's also funding to support it, so if you, if you want to find out about it, talk to the Maths Hub, 
talk to people that have been involved and do it now.